<laughs> oh my god. <sighs> this is by far the most nervous I've ever been on stage. So, it's not entirely true that I'm self taught. Dave Hamlin in the back of the room there, who was my first drum teacher. And um, I think that, you know, any musician, I mean, I, I didn't have a formal education, but I, I, I formally educated myself off of listening to hundreds and thousands of other musicians, not just drummers, but I learned an incredible thing from uh, Bob Galati, who's a great drummer in Boston, and he's been in the same band for 40 years called The Fringe. And he, one of the projects he did was to um, transpose all of Charlie Parker's saxophone solos onto the drums. And I thought that was pretty interesting. Well, why Charlie Parker? And he said, well, I'm a jazz drummer. Why the hell would I listen to other jazz drummers? I want to listen to the guys I'm going to be playing with and the instruments I'm going to be playing with to learn how they think and how they feel and you know phrase rhythms and melodies and because then when i'm playing with them if i'm playing with any other all other saxophone I'm a jazz drummer all other saxophone players listen to charlie parker so if i learn everything charlie parker did the second i start playing with any other saxophone player i'm gonna be crawling right up his ass <laughs> <laughs> and, and yeah i just thought it was the greatest thing in the world and i and i realized at that moment that I had accidentally stumbled into what I used to do because my stereo, my little stereo that my grandparents bought me for my bar mitzvah <laughs> was, was in, by the way, my bar mitzvah was an incredible, that was like one of the greatest music lessons of all time uh, because I had to memorize this incredibly long, complicated, weird sounding thing with, you know, vague, vagary, you know, you know, like, um, not real, you know, no notes per se, but, you know, ups and downs and, and pitches and, and this whole weird roadmap of stuff. And, and, and I really actually, in an odd way, think that that, that prepared me for 32 years in fish. Oh my God. <laughs> But, uh, and, and unlike everyone else who has been up here, practically, I mean, it's just incredible listening to the stories of Bobby Comstock and Chris Goss and everybody else. I, I'm like the opposite. I've been in one band. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that one band uh, has been such an incredibly adventurous, spirited unit that... Um, I feel like I've gotten the kind of education that you might get if you were and played with hundreds of other people because everything that we, every time we discover that we sucked at something, we'd work really hard to try to get better at it. And, uh, you know, like, I, I still suck at shuffles. And, uh, but I've been working on the shuffle now for like the last three years. I mean, eventually I'm going to get really good at it. <laughs> and uh, but you know there's 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 always that there's always something that you're you're just trying to you know your brain your imagination is always way ahead of your body and I am just so lucky and fortunate that I can I have gotten away with uh, starting in my as Chris said the rainy dark city of Syracuse where I sequestered myself in the basement for years to, you know, to plug away at, at, at this thing and then slowly move it out of my basement and <laughs> make a living at it for, with, and you know, meet a group of friends in college, which by the way, and I'm proud of this, 
my grade point average that first semester that my father so <laughs> hesitantly that was that was really good trying to avoid that. It was a zero point three six when I called him that day. <laughs> <laughs> but I called him that day and I was like, ah, you're not going to be too happy about this. But it was a good, because, well, you know, try your best and you'll stay, just uh, hang in there and, you know, because they said you have to get a 2-0 in the next semester to, to stay in school and then you can switch over to liberal arts and stuff. And, uh, you know, I told my dad this and he said, well, you just give it you know, a 2-0, I mean, <laughs> you can do that, you know. And, and so, and I got a one Nine six. So that was truly meant to be, uh, for me to leave there and go to Goddard College, which, and, all right, now, no, I did, I did, but let, let me just say this about Goddard. My, my, <laughs> my admissions uh, process was, I walked, and I don't even know when I walked into the Goddard office that I actually spoke to an admissions person. Uh, it was a woman in the office. I, I, mean, I, I said to her, um, you know, I want to come to school here. She says, well, what do you want to do? I said, well, I'd like to, if I, can I lock myself in a room here and practice my drums for three years and get credit for it? And she said, yes. <laughs> and then, you know, and I remember leaving there thinking, I don't even know if she was an admissions lady, you know, like, I was like uh, <laughs> but I, I did, that's, that's what I did. And Fish practiced and there's a little, a uh, garden house there, and like a little glass stone building. They kept plastic chairs in, and we we practiced in there. And uh, but to have been able to, you know, start in my basement with this, you know, my posters of Freddie Mercury on the wall and Hendrix and you know, and <laughs> Zeppelin and all my idols, and and um, to go and find out, careful what you wish for. That's that's a big part of that too. But um, but to be able to move that out of the basement and and to meet my friends at UVM, fail out of UVM, but stay in Fish and have that be my vehicle through life and afford me a living, uh, my wife and five children uh, that I can support with music. Uh, I mean, I don't even know where to start. That is just unbelievable. I feel like I'm exactly the same kid that I was when I was eight years old practicing in my basement. And I'm 50, I just turned 50, and I'm still getting away with this. <laughs> so, you know, and a Lifetime Achievement Award at 50 is kind of weird. Um, <laughs> and, and, I, and I really, and I feel like maybe I don't mean to speak for everybody up here, but I feel like everyone else that came up here did say this. Um, that I kind of feel like the award itself really is like I, because my job is a public job and it's in the public eye, as are the other musicians and artists that spoke tonight, that we kind of get to represent, we get to be sort of the, the physically present, visible tip of the iceberg that is the communities and the families and the teachers and all of those people combined that produced uh, us or the music that we all took part in you know I'm, I'm it's an individual achievement in drumming I mean it's I, I, I'm just drumming you know and I, I'm gonna just keep doing that but 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 I mean but the achievement it is the, the whole that is greater than the sum of its parts. You know, the band I'm in and the communities that I have been part of and privileged to be part of my life. And I'm just so grateful for all that support. And um, I just feel like, you know, the Lifetime Achievement Award has nothing to do with me as an individual. It really, really truly is about everything that I just get to be the little visible representative of all of you and all of your effort and all of the people in my life that did got me here. So, thank you. And by the way, I totally remember laying in bed at night listening to the radio and hearing him and hearing tonight at Lost Horizon, the works. 
I, I mean, many, many times. I never heard the works. I never got to see you guys because I was still like not even fake ID age. But, but I did sneak out. And I, you need to know this now, Dan. In '79, with the first Joe, the Joe's Garage tour, and Vinnie Colaiuta was 19 years old and playing with Zappa on that tour. They came to the Manly Fieldhouse the first time I saw him. The first three times I saw him, I snuck out my bedroom window, <laughs> which is on Halton Road, which is a mile from Manly Fieldhouse, and went down and scalped the ticket to see Zappa three years in a row for like ten bucks. That was the that was the scalp price. It was ten bucks. <laughs> And so I saw him like ten, like ten times, but the first four were here in Syracuse at Manly Fieldhouse, and that, those were life-changing events. I saw King Crimson at the Landmark in 81, which was totally life-altering as well. And anyway, but I remember hearing about the work, so I wish I saw you guys then, but I'll, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> John Fishman. We learned a couple things. I didn't know.